Hi, my name is James Schmelzer, Master Craftsman Photographer from Detroit, Michigan, and Lumix Luminary. Today I'm going to show you how to tether from your GH5 to your computer. First thing you want to do is download the new software version 2.0 on your GH5. Then you're going to need to download the software on your computer, the new tethering software. Once you have it on there and you launch it, let's take a look and see what some of the features are on here. So at the top you can see we have live view. When you have live view, she's not just there, she is live. So in the live view up at the top, we can take a look at some of these buttons. You've got video recording, you've got your autofocus set. It's kind of like when you push the button down and it holds the focus and locks it. And then over here is where you can take some photographs. Look at that. I can take the photographs from over here instead of there. Realistically, why do you want to tether? You want to tether because it's another insurance policy. The photographs are going from here to your computer as a backup. The screen is bigger and they're automatically being saved to a hard drive so you don't have to pull the card out and download it and waste some more time. So below that you can see we have aperture priority manual. You've got all your settings on here that, you can, that will show up on the bar. And then next to that is your aperture priority. You can go through your aperture settings and change your apertures right here from your software program. You can even change your shutter speed. To do that, you just go back over to the camera and go to shutter priority or manual. If you are on manual, what you'll do right now, then you would have both of these buttons available to you at the top where you can switch from aperture priority and you can even change your shutter speeds from your tethering software at your computer. Below that you have your drive modes, which is the same drive modes on your camera. You do have them over here, but you can't change those from the computer. You would need to change them over here. But what it's doing here is it's actually showing you what drive mode you're on so you know. Next to that is your white balance settings. You can do custom white balance, you can do daylight, you can do all the same settings that you would do at your camera over here on your tethering software. You can change your ISO. You can go into your exposure compensation. To do that, I'll just put the camera back on automatic and you can see I can darken up the image, I can make the image brighter or darker by your, over, your exposure compensation. Below that is your picture size. You've got large, medium, and small. Once you've selected that, you can also control the quality. I normally shoot raw with a little bit of a JPEG in case we do need a JPEG for something. Next to that is the quality of your motion picture. Are you shooting in 4K or 1080p? And what's your frame rate? You can control right there. Below that is your focus mode. Are you on follow focus? Are you on constant focus? Or are you on manual focus? And then you have your autofocus settings. Are you on face recognition? Or are you on spot? So again, you have all the features you would have on your camera, plus your photo style, whether you're on natural or vivid or then you've got your metering modes that you can change down here too. And then below that is your white balance setting. You can actually go into a custom and customize the color yourself. Add a little red, add a little blue in the scene if you're not liking exactly how it is. And then you can save that. So below that we have our settings. And up at the top of the settings it says where are you going to store these images? Are you going to store it on the SD card? Are you going to store it on the SD card? and your computer or just the computer. So those are great options too. I normally keep it on the SD card and the computer so that I have a backup of both. Below that is the import, user setting. User setting means I'm the user or you're the user and it's what you've set it at. And so for me the reference is my external hard drive that I have plugged in and the Lumix folder that I created for that. And then below that, you can change the suffix name so that at the beginning of it, it'll have a different name, like mine has my business name on there, and where you want to start your numbering. And then below that, you can transfer your images, the images that are being transferred. Do you want it to be a RAW, a JPEG, or what that is? So once you have those all set there, you can save that. Now we can see down here in the bottom, this brings up your flash settings. So up here in the flash palette, we can see how you, we can control up to three separate flashes. So what I have on set here today is I have two Panasonic Lumix flashes. So what I'm going to do is take a photograph right now with those flashes and show you how these two can work in conjunction. So a little bit of smile there. Nice. 
And look how beautiful that is. So again, if you go into your flash settings, you can do that. Now, if you don't want to use the flashes that are on your camera and you want to use a power pack in your studio, then you can use a pocket wizard makes a trigger for the Panasonic camera that's great to trigger like power packs and other type of flashes that are not Panasonic flashes. So let's go past that and go into the live view palette. Now when we're in the live view palette you can see up at the top it has white balance. That's your custom white balance. If you want to go in there and use a picker and go in there and pick something neutral like the black in the center of her eyeball or something and white balance from that you can. And then below that let me shut that back off. And then below that, you can see you have a level gauge. You have a grid. And when you're in the grid, you can actually change the grid. This is kind of cool because you can change the distances of those grids all through there. And then below that, you have guidelines that will actually pop up. You can even change the color of the guidelines. So if you're into changing color on your guidelines so you don't get confused from the get grid, you also have that and you can control the sizes of that. So that's pretty cool. That's really amazing to have that. And of course you have your histogram down there. Now below that is your zoom scale. Let's pull those grids out of there because she looks kind of pretty to have any of that around her. So down here is your zoom scale. If you want to go in and check your focusing, let's put this on manual focus for a minute. And let's just check to see how is the focus. So once you've got that, it lights up one shot, which means if you click that, it'll focus it and you're ready to take your photograph. So let's go back down here. This is your zoom scale. If you click that zoom scale, it'll tell you the times that it's into. Look at eight times. Look at how far I've zoomed in to check my focus. You can also go into manual adjust focus and you can see it's getting blurry and then I'll bring it back slower or faster and you can focus that picture so accurately from here that you wouldn't even need to go back over there. So that's some of the features that are available over here. Now as far as your live view, you can keep it on auto, you can rotate it. Auto seems to keep it correct all the time so if you don't want to have to go in there and switch these things around, keep it on auto. Aspect ratio, you can control your cropping of how you want your aspect to be. I suggest 16 by 9 if you're going to shoot video and stills back and forth so you don't have to recompose your frame. If you're just taking stills, the full image sensor would be the 4.3. And so that's some of the great features we have there. So why don't we just take a few more photographs, see how this works. Are you smiling? Are you happy to be here? You smile really nice. Beautiful. So you can see how fast they are pulling up on here as quick as you can take that photograph. All right, so let's get out of live view for a minute and open up another really cool feature and that is I can have these images go right into Lightroom. So we're going to open up Lightroom now. Wouldn't that be cool if you could take the photographs and go right into Lightroom ready to go. Someone could work on the photographs and actually touch them up right then and there. So let's take a look at this. Let's see how I set this up. So in Lightroom, if you want to know how to do it in Lightroom really quick, go up to the top where it says File. And then you pull down, don't go to Tether, go to Auto Import because the GH5 software is tethering it. We don't want it to tether. We just want the images to go into Lightroom so we're ready to touch them up. So we're going to go to Auto Import. And up at the top, look at this little button up here where it says Enable Auto Import. Check that that enables it. It's going to happen. Pick your folder of where you want it to go. I actually have it in the Panasonic folder. And then I'm going to an external, external hard drive because I want it, even if I want to take the hard drive and go with it, I already have it on an external hard drive. And once that's set, the images that you're taking are popping right up into Lightroom. So I hope you're excited about this new software. And like I said, I've been at this shooting digital, I'm not going to say how old I am, but I'll just say over 20 years because I'm not really, I'm really not that old. And remember the first digital cameras, that's all they did was tether. They didn't have, you know, the backs built into the cameras. And then we didn't even have live view on the back of the cameras. We had to be tethered. It was the only way you could see it. But again, the importance of tethering is so that you could either have somebody on the set while you're doing it, you can check your, 
you check your focus, you get a larger view, and it's, for me, it's another insurance policy on the set uh, that the images are turning out great. And it's mainly because of the photographer, you know what I mean? The model's good, yeah, I like the model, but really it's the photographer, it's the lighting, nope, it's the Lumix camera. So I hope you're enjoying your GH5, and I hope you're excited to download the new software. It's very easy to upgrade your firmware, and it's very easy to download the software. And then this is a little cable I have by Tether Tools. Remember, when you buy your camera, it does come with this cable in it, and you also have the adapter on here that's keeping the connection from breaking off or getting pulled out. So enjoy. Panasonic.